coming once again from Coindesk says companies have already survived the previous down market and have enough capital and a sound business strategy will be able to survive this cycle. Survival of the fittest. The old adage is playing out for crypto miners this year as a sell off in the broader market is squeezing out some companies in the overcrowded industry. In digital asset mining, particularly for Bitcoin, competition has increased greatly in recent years as several new entrants joined the industry during the peak of 2021. However, with a price decline, survival of many new miners might be hanging on these companies being able to sell themselves or merge with another peer, according to industry participants. Quote, I think in the next six months or so, we'll probably see some MNA activity happen, end quote, said Amanda Fabiano, head of mining at Galaxy Digital, because some miners who got into the sector during the peak are just not going to be able to meet their requirements. And I think this applies to home miners as well. And we've been talking about this for a long time because a lot of people will be like, uh, you know, are you buying GPUs? And I had kind of slowed down when they got really expensive. And I was like, no, because I bought all my GPUs beforehand. Once again, when I talk about the, the things that I did right and the things that I did wrong, one of the things that I did right was purchasing a bunch of GPUs that basically gamers didn't want due to poor thermal pad placement and they didn't want to replace the thermal pads for a discounted price before the super cycle, right? And so, and before it really kicked off. So some of these ideas are things that I'll be covering and things for you to start looking out for because it's not just about going out to Best Buy and purchasing all the GPUs on the shelves for MSRP. While that will still be better than purchasing GPUs at scalper prices during the next bull run, you still wanna be as low as possible on your costs per hash, right? And so looking for opportunities like that are things that are gonna help you be even more successful on the next run, right? Quote, I think in the next six months or so, we'll probably see some M&A activity. That's what she said. During the 2020 bull run of the crypto market, the margins of some Bitcoin miners had been as high as 90%, which led to many new entrants and miners looking to grow at hyper speed. Now, this is where I think I failed because there is, and this is kind of, this is tricky, okay? And this is the part I haven't figured out. And I'll definitely be going into more detail. Um, the part that I didn't figure out was how to scale quickly, uh, quick enough to basically cover the rent costs that I have. So this is where I have failed, right? And I'll go into more detail later on. But the idea was I was supposed to have essentially 800 amps of power last July. I did not get 800 amps of power last July, partly because I went into a rental agreement that I was supposed to get that. However, that rental agreement kept getting pushed down further and further down the road. And now here we are almost going into July of 2022, and I am still stuck on 200 amps paying the rent that should be paid for 800 amps. And I have completely gone through pretty much all of my capital trying to just survive. So there is a section of like trying to grow at hyperspeed and then like, just making bad decisions, right? So that's kind of how this like ends up sorting out. And I'm, I'm like I said, I want to articulate this more for you guys later on. But to do so, companies ordered mining rigs at high prices and deposited money up front for their orders. Now, this is a mistake I didn't make, right? Um, I was making sure I had the power available to me and that sort of thing before going into spinning up a whole bunch of mining rigs and pre-purchasing a bunch, right? So these large companies though, they're putting in large orders. This is also why I think from the ASIC mining perspective, the prices on ASIC miners haven't come back down fully to where they should be in relation to the price of Bitcoin. We've been talking about this for the last year at this point where we keep seeing an increase in difficulty of Bitcoin despite the price. And this is because a lot of the power and the hash rate that's coming onto the Bitcoin network was all ordered last year and basically was hampered not only by, you know, 
the demand, but also by frankly, the, uh, the, the external factors of economy and production supply chain, right? So it's, it's making it look very, very odd right now. So I do think while this market looks different than we saw in the previous super cycle, I think a lot of that is specifically due to this combination of, of not only the traditional super cycle, but also what's going on in the real world, right? And what is happening with supply chains and so on. So I think it's kind of combining to create this weird illusion of increase of difficulty and hash rate on the Bitcoin network, even though the price is going down. Fast forward to 2022 and Bitcoin prices have tumbled and margins have shrunk. Bitcoin's network hash rate is hovering around all time highs and operating costs are higher due to rise in energy prices, leaving miners in a very tight spot. A falling or a falling Bitcoin price means minor margins are compressing, said Mason Joppa, co-founder and CEO of a blockchain infrastructure and cryptocurrency mining company Blockware Solutions. On top of that, margins have also been declining because, because Bitcoin's network mining difficulty is increasing as more miners are joining the network. Like I said, I think this specifically has to do with the supply chain being kind of bottlenecked and everybody ordering a bunch of rigs and them not even coming in till this year. And so we're getting in this weird spot where we're still seeing an increase of network hash rate, right? Many of these companies that came into the mining sector in the last 12 to 18 months lacked a sound balance sheet. Mike Levitt, CEO of Core Scientific, the largest publicly traded miner in terms of hash rate, told Coindesk. These companies have found themselves in a position where they made plans and commitments that assumed external capital, whether from public or private markets, would always be readily available, he said. Now the cost of capital, if available at all, at all, I'm adding the at all there, just got more expensive. And some of these miners do not have sufficient capital to finish what they have started. Now this I can relate to. I do not have sufficient capital to finish what I've started. So I'm about to end up with 800 amps, high rent price and 200 amps of equipment, not able to uh, expand quickly enough. Now, because I don't have the capital to fill, fill up another 600 amps. I have a few strategies I'm gonna be talking about trying to figure out how to do this. But as it sits right now, because of basically the entire market and the economy and the way it runs, I couldn't even go out necessarily and get a loan to fill up those 800 amps because getting a loan at this point, especially for a cryptocurrency mining operation is gonna be near impossible, right? Moreover, supply chain issues and lack of access to capital are making matters worse for many miners. The ability to secure large pre-orders of ASIC miners is no longer the major bottleneck to growth, said Wall Street Bank Jeffries analyst Jonathan Peterson in a research note. And this makes sense, right? As opposed to last year where it was really easy to get capital, whether that be from borrowing it or publicly traded offerings or whatever it may be, Last year, that, that money was accessible, but we had a bottleneck of supply chain. This year, it's the inverse, right? You're not going to be able to get the capital, but you'll have basically the supply chain solved because the demand is going to be significantly decreased. Construction delays caused by difficulty securing building materials and finalizing power purchase agreements are large impediments to deploying new fleets. Once again, I highly relate to this. Obviously, what ended up happening for me is a large delay in finalizing power purchase agreements and so on. And this is just the way it ends up playing out. This perspective was echoed by crypto miner Hive blockchain. Quote, the crypto mining industry in general appears to find itself at a crossroads with a supply of very expensive ASIC chips and few places to plug them in, according to a statement from the miner. In our market intelligence, the company has noticed significant supply disruptions for electrical equipment needed to make data centers, such as transformers and switch gear. All these factors combined and some of the newer and less capitalized miners are now in a limbo as they are finding it hard to pay for their operations under the terms set out during the bull run. 
Quote, I think we're going to see miners get humbled this year in contrast to last year when we saw the rise of public miners, Fabiano said. Some of the miners who have signed some longer term contracts will have to put a lot of money in order to satisfy those obligations, she added. On top of that, the ASIC markets are shifting downward, which means that miners are not going to be able to make the profit that they could have on the secondary market by just selling their machines if their operations aren't up and running, according to Fabiano. In fact, with the slide in Bitcoin prices, some of the older mining rigs, such as Bitmain's Antminer S9s, are becoming less profitable, leading to miners shutting them down to avoid shouldering the costs. Now, this is interesting. I don't know if you guys remember, but I had talked about talking to some ASIC miners that were purchasing a bunch of S9s. Um, now, in Texas, it's a little bit easier because the, a lot of the guys that were doing this were doing it with flare gas, and I think they'll be okay, right? Because the, the way the power cost structure goes into play. But I know that now, obviously, those S9 margins are extremely low, and they're only going to get lower... Um, even running something like flare gas where you're paying two to three cents a kilowatt hour due to the fact that we're going to have new, newer and newer miners coming on and they're starting to get shipped out now, right? So I don't know if that was a great idea, leading to miners shutting them down to avoiding shouldering the costs. This is likely to drive several miners to look for an exit strategy by selling their business or merging with other companies. Quote, I think the ones that have no operational experience, no background in Bitcoin mining are probably the ones that will look for M&A. Or they'll have a distressed debt situation where they're taking on expensive debt, she said. This tight market environment has already led to larger, more established miners such as Core Scientific and Bitfarms to lower their hash rate growth expectations for the year to a level that is more serviceable via capital they already have on their balance sheets. Meanwhile, Marathon Digital remains cautiously optimistic about their hash rate growth outlook. With larger min miners reining in their growth outlook, the newer and smaller miners are likely to be in a tougher spot. I think the newer and smaller miners have the largest opportunity here, right? Because as these larger miners get pressured, the smaller miners will be able to capitalize on the lower prices of equipment, hopefully, right? This will probably lead to mergers fairly quickly, given how long these new entrants can actually withstand some of this market volatility in a bear market. According to Michael Ash, head of investment banking at Globe, uh, Galaxy Digital, he said, quote, I think we're going to see all different shapes and forms of M&A opportunities in this cycle, he said. In fact, Core Scientific has said that the company is already getting calls for M&A from miners who are feeling the squeeze. There are a number of folks that have commitments that were dependent upon their being able to raise additional capital, and they're finding it challenging to raise that capital, said Coors Levitt uh, during a conference call, adding, we're starting already to have to, be, uh, to have to be approached, frankly, with opportunities. Core Scientific will look at two types of potential M&A deals. One is cheap mining companies, and the other is a business that helps the company grow, Levitt told Coindesk. Those are the two areas we're looking for. It's either value or growth. And if you're really lucky, it's a combination of both, he said. Moreover, he is also getting calls from other parts of the mining ecosystem, including companies with electrical equipment and power providers who now suddenly have a surplus of both and need buyers. Quote, companies that did not prepare for this downturn have very difficult strategic decisions to make. In terms of consolidation, we appreciate the current complexities in this industry and will continue to look into acquiring the best in class of our industry as we are presented with those deals, end quote, Levitt added. Miners who are more capitalized and have a solid strategy will likely find a, such a market an opportunistic one to pick up assets or companies at cheaper valuations. Yes, that is what we're looking for, especially. See... One of the things that we've I, I've talked about on the show a lot is like, especially when it comes to pertains to Bitcoin mining, is like this bull run cycle where it's impossible for the average Joe to get into cryptocurrency mining. And 
when you experience a bear market like this, it opens up opportunities for people at lower to middle class to start getting into it. So it does end up having a positive effect because eventually also what that hopefully means is that we have stronger decentralization. And by that, I mean a more spread out uh, hash rate across the public and less of it being concentrated on large companies that are able to spin up a ton of capital because that capital is going away for them. This cycle is an interesting opportunity from an M&A perspective because you have to do some of these more or you have some of these more established miners who have already weathered the past bear markets and will now look at this opportunity to go out and acquire equipment and real estate at attractive values, said Galaxy's Ash. Now, real estate will be an interesting one to get a hold of because obviously, as you guys know, we're kind of in some sort of, I, I, I want to be careful because I'm not uh, a real estate expert. The way I perceive it is some sort of real estate bubble. Um, preferably, ideally, that pops as well right now, right? So that you can acquire real estate at a reasonable price. That's what I would be looking for. With publicly traded mining equities down on average more than 50% this year, investors' confidence in the sector might have or might be shaken. However, this could be an opportune time for longer-term investors to bottom fish for attractive value. Quote, timing the exact bottom is not easy, but many on-chain and market indicators point to now being a good time to accumulate both Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining rigs, end quote, said Blockware Solutions Joppa. So then, what should the investors look for in a miner in sort, uh, to sort out the winners? One answer is to look at past downturns. Quote, the miners have survived the bear markets in the past are still going to be the ones that survive this next round, end quote, said Galaxy's Fabiano. Being extremely opportunistic over the next six months with ASICs as their prices drop, while also having a really strong strategy for growth on the infrastructure side, will be an amazing way for miners to really separate themselves from the masses. Miners who are prepared and have the latest generation equipment with locked-in power rates will be able to benefit from the current market conditions, said Zach Bradford, CEO of Bitcoin Miner CleanSpark. Now, that is one thing I did do good. I have locked in my power rates for over three years now and I have locked in my rent. So I have completely fixed costs. The only thing I have to do personally is spin up enough capital to fill out the amount of power I have. And then I'm gold. Um, but we've talked about this before, trying to get those rates locked in and so on. Um, this stage in the business cycle will reward miners that have consistently delivered value to their shareholders and the Bitcoin ecosystem, he added. Another crucial factor to consider is the miners that are already sitting on cash and are still able to access the capital markets to finance their growth. I do not have that. Um, quote, as the Bitcoin mining industry funds more of its growth with debt, we expect the profitability of miners to continue to diverge with the larger public miners, widening their cost of capital advantage, end quote, wrote Wall Street Investment Bank BTIG's analyst Gregory Lewis in a recent research note. Digging deeper, Jeffries Peterson sees large, my, larger miners such as Marathon Digital and Core Scientific at a relative advantage compared to smaller miners when accessing debt financing. I would agree. He also expects companies to start selling some of their mined Bitcoins that they usually hold on to their balance sheets in order to pay for operational experience, uh, expenses. I agree. This has been re a repeated process. Uh, recently, Miner Argo Blockchain said during its first quarter conference call that it is raising debt and selling a portion of its mined Bitcoin to cover some of its, its expenses. Meanwhile, Core Scientific said it sold some of its mined Bitcoins this year and will continue to do so. Other miners, such as Marathon, also said that they are considering selling some of their mined Bitcoins, while Peer Riot Blockchain has already started selling its mined digital assets. Once miners start selling their Bitcoin like this, you know you are in a bear market. You know it's the crypto winter, my friends. This happens every single time. My question is, is like, Who's the guy that's doing the opposite strategy and selling all their Bitcoin during the bull run and then basically using that as capital to invest later? I feel like that would be would be a better strategy for the, this next run. I'm just saying, taking that outside perspective, 
I'd be mining up all that Bitcoin right now, living off that capital I made before. You know what I'm saying? And sell it. Anyways. Tying it all together, Arcane Research's, Research's analyst, uh, uh, Jaron Mel Melarud, wrote in a recent report that to gauge which miners are the best prepared to get through the bear market and eventually potentially capitalize on it by buying assets of distressed competitors, it's essential to look at two factors, each company's Bitcoin production cost and the strength of their balance sheets. Based on the most recent information, Riot Blockchain has the lowest power prices among the top five miners by market cap, only paying $24 per megawatt per hour. That's 2.4 cents per kilowatt hour, he wrote. He also noted that power prices have likely increased for all mining com companies in recent months. Quote, overall, based solely on its low power costs and healthy balance sheet, Riot seems to currently be the strongest position of the five biggest public miners by market cap, he said. The bottom line is that investors trying to pick winners in a down market should look for miners with traits that include proven operational track records, lower costs, and good treasury management strategies and hedging options. Boom. There you go. I think that was an extremely informative article, even though it does focus on the large mining companies as this leaks on me. Uh, I think it can be applied to a lot of the small home miners as well as you look into what you're going to be doing. Um, now would probably be the time to try to lock in power costs of some sort. Now would be the time to lock in your expenses get the if you're gonna lease i don't recommend it because i think I've, that's probably the part where i've really failed um but if you were gonna lease you find out what that number is going to be and you lock that in for a long term if you're going to buy property maybe wait until this something happens with real estate i don't know exactly what that will be but i assume uh, that will happen at some point as well. I could be completely wrong and this isn't financial advice, but you know, get ready to be able to purchase some property where you're able to actually get power out there, that sort of thing. It's accumulation period. That's what it is at the end of the day, right? Um, the question will be is, can you accumulate properly and still survive? What kind of outside additional income revenue streams are you going to look at and are you going to educate yourself on the wider crypto market as well which is something i've been trying to do as of late of course um examples you know even on the youtube channel here starting to play more with web3 uh, play more with flux get more familiar with uh, different coding languages whatever that may be um some Developers will become more accessible because they'll have more time because they won't be getting inundated with stuff. People like myself who are inundated during a bull run with just absolute madness in emails, uh, scheduling appointments and so on, I'll be more accessible. So you'll be able to reach out to me and get communication from me a lot easier during these times. So you can get information from me uh, there like People like Red Panda Mining, Bitsby Trippin' will have a little bit more freed up time because the inboxes won't be as full. Use this time to reach out to all those. Now, if there are developers and so on that disappear during the bear or the bear market, then you know if they pop back up during the next bull run cycle, you know who to avoid, right? So these are all the same kinds of things that will repeat themselves. It's a cyclical thing. It is at the end of the day, in my opinion, still the a positive and the most opportunity. But I won't lie. Personally, I am stressed out trying to figure out how I'm going to survive, right? So my costs just in general living outweigh, of course, the, the, the amount of revenue I'm able to generate in a lot of areas. I'm working on that. Some of those things are outside of my control. It's why you've seen me probably get really into like a lot more uh, stoicism, et cetera, is trying to remind myself to just focus on the things that I can control and move from there. That sort of practice is going to be super helpful. Um, 
and then you know just trying to remain uh i guess it's it's easy to be humble when when it's uh when you're in it when it's in a position like this obviously with the youtube channel as well it does mean that one of my um one of my revenue streams is directly related to cryptocurrency i have to figure out that as well um from that perspective so i think like a lot of us are going to be going through the same things and i think there's a lot of opportunity here but it will be extremely extremely stressful I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.